When structures become abandoned, nature tends to reclaim what once once was to the point that over time it can disappear entirely. This is no different when it comes to nuclear power plants, which can be swallowed by the surrounding landscape and become home to the wildlife in the area. This is precisely what happened to a nuclear power plant in Poland. However, the creatures that took up residence there might surprise people. Take a look to see what happened when a colony of ants became trapped inside and the extreme lengths they went to survive. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Back in 2013, a group of Polish scientists made a journey to an abandoned bunker where they assumed they were going to be able to observe a colony of bats that they were studying. The bunker had been part of a now abandoned nuclear power plant and the team wasn't entirely sure what they might find. The facility was now overgrown and home to a variety of different creatures. While the scientists may have been looking for bats, what they found was something entirely different. They discovered that the place was covered with ants. There were millions crawling all around the bunker. While most people might not see this unusual, however, what made this particularly strange is that they had been trapped inside without any of the resources necessary to survive. Even ants need some basic resources in order to continue living. The team of scientists came to the conclusion that the ants must have become stuck in the power plant bunker by entering through a ventilation shaft and then were unable to find a way back out. This left the massive colony enclosed inside of the concrete bunker, completely self-contained, with no way for them to have access to food and water. Unsure of how long the ants had been there, the team assumed that the colony was doomed and only had so long to live before they would die out. The team didn't think much more of the ants, considering that there wasn't much that they could do for them. Assuming they would eventually die out, they left the bunker and the ants that were trapped within it. However, when the team returned to the same power plant two years later to check on the ants out of curiosity, they were astonished by what they found. Amazingly, the ant colony hadn't died off yet, and their numbers showed no signs of dwindling. Instead of the ants slowly dying out like the scientists had assumed that they would, it opposite had happened. The ants appeared to be thriving, and their numbers had at least doubled from their last visit to the power plant two years prior. Still, there were no clear signs of food or water, so the team was completely clueless how this phenomenon managed to take place. Regardless that the ants had access to virtually no food and water, it wasn't utterly unbelievable that they were still alive, as ants are incredibly resilient and resourceful creatures, one of the reasons that they have been in existence for so long. Some colonies have been found inside walls under concrete and even inside a car engine. But for these ants' situation, this still all seemed like a bit of a stretch. On top of that, they had multiplied. This particular colony of ants had no choice and they either needed to adapt to their surroundings or die. Even though it might have seemed like an impossible task, these minuscule insects managed to find a way. Programmed to do what they needed to do to survive, the ants did the unthinkable. When it comes to starvation, almost all creatures will go to extreme lengths to eat in order to survive. As it turns out, these trapped ants resorted to eating their own kind as a source of food. The colony began partaking in cannibalism on the bodies of their fellow ants. Some of the ants, both alive and dead, showed evidence of bite marks from other ants. This would provide the answer to not only how the ants had survived for so long, but how the colony managed to double since the last time that the researchers encountered them. Incredibly, the cannibalistic wounds that were found on the deceased ants all seemed to be around one specific area, the abdomen. While this may seem random, scientists have discovered an explanation for why this might be. As it turns out, ants share their resources with one another more so than most other creatures on planet Earth. The reasoning behind this might prove to be more gruesome than most people think. While most people might assume that the ants began eating each other for the simple reason to survive, it's actually a lot darker than that. Experts claim that the reason the ants were specifically taking bites out of the abdomens of the other ants was that they believed that the stomach contents of the other ants belonged to them as well. This is why it didn't take long for this colony of ants to resort to cannibalism. No matter how gruesome it may seem, the scientists were undoubtedly impressed by the resilience of these insects. Not only was it resourceful, but it proved to be incredibly effective. 
Ants are insects that are programmed to survive and thrive even under conditions going far beyond the limits of the survival of the species, for example. Some ant colonies have even managed to survive floods by creating rafts made up entirely of their own bodies. After figuring out how exactly they had managed, had to survive after all of that time, the researchers decided to help the cannibalistic insects out. They constructed a bridge using a 2x4 that would act as a path for the ants to the outside if they should choose to follow it. Assuming this is all that they could do to help the colony without interfering with it, they left the bunker and waited a full year to return. A year later upon returning, the scientists were greeted by a completely empty bunker. Amazingly, the makeshift path that the researchers had left behind worked, and the cannibalistic ants had all left the place where they had once been trapped. Although the team was happy that their plan had worked, it also meant that now there was a large colony of cannibalistic ants roaming around the surrounding Polish forest. The discovery and documentation of the colony of cannibalistic ants proved to be useful to fellow researchers, especially those who study the behaviors of ants and other insects. They claimed that the findings add a dimension to the great adaptive ability of ants to marginal habitats and suboptimal conditions as the key to understanding their unquestionable eco-evolutionary success. It helped to prove that ants are truly a remarkable species far more capable than many people believe. While the thought of a horde of cannibalistic ants might be unnerving to some people, they wouldn't be able to take over the world. Mother Nature provided one insect with the ability to keep this population of ants under control. This is known as the Alcon blue butterfly, an insect that can be found in the meadows of Europe. Although it interacts with its own kind, there's another insect that it has a relationship with. The Alcon blue butterfly actually has a relationship with two different species of red ants known as Murmurmica rubra and Murmurmica ruginotis. The connection between the butterfly and these two species of red ants begins with a rare plant known as a marsh gentian plant, on which the alcan butterfly stops to lay its eggs. By the time the butterfly finishes laying its eggs, there will be several dozen larvae on the plant. The alcan blue butterfly is known as a brood parasite, meaning that they trick a different species into raising their young. Alcan blue butterflies do this with the two species of red ants. Once the butterflies lay their eggs on the marsh gentian plant, the red ants storm the plant after the butterfly has left. David Nash from the University of Copenhagen, Denmark, studied this process. He compared it to a phenomenon that also occurs between two species of birds. Once the butterfly leaves the plants, the colony of red ants makes its move and begins to scour the area in search of the larvae. There's a reason they're attracted to this different species. This is because the larvae are coated with a chemical that mimics the scent of the red ants, causing the ants to believe they are the same species. Tricked by the scent, the ants then tend to the larvae as if they were their own offspring. The ants even carry the butterfly larvae on their back to the hive, convinced they're their own kind. Interestingly enough, the ants are so focused on taking care of the butterfly larvae that they start to forget about their own young. It's an ant colony, taking care of just a few of the butterfly larvae can result in the colony not having any offspring of their own. However, things change when the larvae evolve into butterflies. It's in the butterfly larvae, which eventually turn into caterpillars, spend around 23 months in the ant nest until they emerge from their pupas as butterflies, but with all of the chemicals that fool the ants gone, the ants come to the realization that they are intruders and begin immediately attacking the butterflies. However, it's no use. The butterflies are now covered in scales that protect them from the ants. They then fly away after having been successfully nurtured by the ants until maturity. It's the ultimate con by Mother Nature.